Hello and welcome to the lecture series on economics of growth and development. In the previous class, we have seen the definition of poverty given by World Bank. It was talking about pronounced deprivation in well-being. We have also seen the narrow sense as well as the broad sense of what do you mean by well-being. In today's class, I'll be talking about the different types of poverty. The one, the first one is called as absolute poverty and the second is called as relative poverty. So let's get started. Absolute poverty according to the United Nations or the United Nations definition of absolute poverty is a condition characterized by severe deprivation of basic human needs including food, access to sanitation, access to safe drinking water, health, education and information. Furthermore, it depends not only on income but also on access to different services which I have listed here that is food, safe drinking water, sanitation, health, shelter, education, information etc. So absolute poverty is not only deprivation in terms of my income but also access to certain services. Furthermore, absolute poverty is seen as a failure of meeting the basic dignity of human being or even a failure to meet human rights that is the right to education or the right to food or, or the security of food or, or basic uh, services such as sanitation or drinking water or education, health, all of that. So this is how you look at absolute poverty and, and you see that it is severe deprivation not only in terms of income per se but also in terms of access to different services. On the contrary, when I am looking at relative poverty, relative poverty means poverty defined in comparison to other people's standing in the economy. This can be either a local level standing, a comparative sense of the local as well as the regional and national international levels. So this is how relative poverty can be seen. Furthermore, thus a person can be poor in relative sense, a person can be poor in relative sense even if he or she is not poor in absolute sense. That means he or she is able to meet the basic needs that is food, shelter, clothing and all of that but in relative sense he or she is poor. Now this means that relative poverty is seen as a matter of failure of distributive justice. That means whatever resources which are there in the particular economy, they are not distributed in a just manner, in a fair manner. And that is why you see something called as relative poverty. That means one person is poor in relation to the other individual. Whether he or she is absolutely poor or not is not a matter of concern because he or she is already meeting his or her basic needs. So therefore, he or she is not absolutely poor in terms of relative poverty, but in relation to someone, both this comparison can be uh, can be within the economy or outside that economy. So therefore, this is what relative poverty means. So I hope the idea of both the absolute poverty and relative poverty is pretty much clear. Both of these are denying justice. Now this justice is something called as global justice. One is denying justice which is called as the distributive justice and the other is looking at looking at the human justice or basic human rights. So these are both the subject matter of global justice at different levels. So I hope absolute poverty that is poverty or deprivation in, in access to services as well as income is pretty much clear in relation to relative poverty which is poverty in relation or in relative sense or in comparison to an individual standing in that particular economy. A person can be relatively poor even if even if he or she is not absolutely poor that is in absolute sense he or she is able to meet his or her needs in the relative sense in 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 in, in, in the relative sense he or she may not be on par with an individual with whom we are comparing him or her so this is how you can look at both absolute poverty as well as re relative poverty so i hope the idea of poverty as well as the types of it both the absolute as well as relative poverty is pretty much clear because in the next class we will be talking about something which is called as the poverty line on what basis you decide whether a person is poor or not. Now this is given at both the global level as well as national level. In India we have certain 
distinctions for example or certain different ways in which you calculate that there are certain committees which ha which have been formulated by uh, or constituted by the government of india and they have given different poverty lines for example the tendulkar committee or the rangarajan committee and all of that so we'll get a hang of all of that in the upcoming lecture so please stay tuned thank you